This is where we left off after I put the Guadamalenses into her summer growing season space. I hope you're already having a great day. This is my blooming alley and I'm going to show you all the blooms that I have, not just in this alley. There are more elsewhere, so I'm hoping maybe with this video, your beautiful day will be enhanced by beautiful blooms. Now it's a bit of a tight squeeze. I'm gonna do my best to hold my camera steady, keep my voice close to the microphone. I am on an open mic, meaning background noise. But anyway, let us start with the middle shelf right here with my beautiful Lelia Hopophila. The three first blooms, they are holding on super well. The one bloom from the newest growth, yeah, not so good. Anyway, that one did develop over the winter, so maybe that has an influence on it, but just gorgeous. And then here is my beautiful Guariciclia Kiyoguchi Happy Field. Not the best of bloomings, but shame. She was repotted last year, so she just needs to recover. And right next to her, I've got lots and lots of fried eggs <laughs> on a spike. This is Memoria Christa Erdmann. It's a dendrobium. It was a gift from Luca Orchideen after a Rapiculus Lelia poll. And well, they don't last very, very long, but they are very, very special. They glisten in the sun. They have pixie dust all over them. They sparkle. They have a shredded lip that I absolutely adore. So this was a very happy gift. It's not one that I would have bought for myself, but sometimes orchids come into your life and you say, yeah, yeah, I'm happy to have you. Just a pity that these gorgeous blooms don't last long at all. Such a shame. They have a very honeysuckle fragrance, very sweet. There's a depth to them as well. So they are quite potent, but you really have to get your nose in there two spikes. We should have had three, so I mourn the third spike still to this day. <laughs> Ooh, but when we go from honeysuckle, look who's in bloom. Check this out. Zygopetalum trozy blue. And goodness me, one, two, three, four, five, six blooms. So far, anyway, only four have opened, but oh this is amazing. This is the best blooming this orchid has had in a very, very long time. So she kind of recovered from the repot. Two years ago it has taken her. Has recovered, but I guess she's due for another repot. <laughs> I think I'm just going to be bumping up Psychopetalums because these have been, yeah, I've been missing these blooms. Been waiting for them a long, long time. Super very pleased with this i hope that the camera is picking up the features the colors properly it's a very tiny screen which i struggle with seeing as long as we stay in focus is all i can say now let me go up slowly there we have old stichiara melissa brian with very stunted spikes that's why i have not taken her down into the blooming alley something bizarre happened there i can't tell you what it was what went on so the spikes never develop beyond the apex of the pseudobulbs and they are not pinched in. They just quickly bloomed out. Anyway, que sera, sera, we can't win them all. When you've got something like this that has happened, that is satisfaction for me. We are moving on down to the far end of the blooming alley now. Oh dear, I really should take my wildcat out. This spike is spent. But before she goes, before she leaves us, here's my Ancelia Africana buffalo crossed with Leo. And these blooms are fading. The lip used to be a beautiful bright yellow, but now the petals and sepals are also fading into a chartreuse green. The lip is now also starting to fade. So this signals that this orchid is just about done blooming been pretty amazing she's been in bloom for six weeks easily the first one that bloomed for me from the order of afri orchids I'm very pleased with the blooms 
longevity, gorgeous, sweet, dusty fragrance. Very pleased, yeah. In the back, oh boy. A massive spectacle of a Dendrobium nobili, no ID. Massive, huge, loads of blooms. Heavy, heavy freesia fragrance matched with vanilla. Look who's in bloom. This is the orchid that was gifted to me by a Cairn Orchids and Tokyo World Mark. This is Leptotis bicolor. And yes, she's blooming on growth that are a little bit smaller than what she came with. So now I know that my conditions probably won't be able to match this kind of growth. But I have lots and lots of blooms on my beautiful little Leptotis that smells of vanilla. And if I wanted to, I could use the blooms and make myself some vanilla ice cream. But I'm not using the blooms for that. I'm using them just for pleasure, enjoyment, and to share them with you. In the back, a little bit more squished up there, but very, very visible from where I'm sat in the living room, is my Dendrobium nobili species, variety Cooksonianum, that I got from Fernanda Nacimento Orchids and Succulents. Gorgeous blooms. I should have had more here too. Three spikes were chomped off while she was living by the hedge in the winter, and there's already two new growths well underway. I'm gonna to have to bring her out soon because she needs a flush and more fertilizer. Here I have a sweet rose fragrance, which is not detectable next to this nobly. <laughs> Definitely not. The nobly with her freesia fragrance just, yeah, she's beating everybody else out of the park. She's not letting anybody get a chance with fragrance. Down here, is my Ascacentrum Ambuyathea Pink Dreamer. This spike here is about to go. My goodness, she's been in bloom for ages. Two months, easily. Super reliable bloomer, super cute blooms. I love this orchid. Thankfully, she's doing well in my climate, even though the humidity is next to non-existent for her. But yeah, I'll take these blooms. I'll take the fact that she does this for me year in, year out. Long, long lasting. So surprised. When we go up here, can I? Can I? <laughs> I don't have a big spectacular nobly blooming this year. There's only one bloom that has opened so far. Her mass blooming was last year, so we have an intermittent blooming on whatever nodes did not bloom last year. But 2024 looks promising with all these canes right here. I have a few scattered buds still to open. Nothing compared to the hundreds of blooms of last year. But still, like I said, stick around for 2024 because <laughs> we're in for a beauty of a show again. She also has a rose fragrance, but of course, again, the nobly overpowers her. Speaking of sticking around, if you have not subscribed to the channel, Feel free to do so. Consider yourself welcome. It would be amazing to have your support here on the patio during the growth season and more so during the winter months when I really, really struggle. And while you're at it, give this video a like. That would be so appreciated as well. So I'm always checking for new growths. I've got the ants back. I may need to spray with some garlic alcohol because there is a little bit of white in that growth. I can see four growths. Now I'm hoping to get five growths out of my tortilla this year. She always gives me five growths and I do not expect anything less than five. That would be ideal. Just give me five growths. Thank you very much. Now, I'm going to shift you over. There's not really much to see here yet, except for some gorgeous, where are you? Small screen. Victoria Regina buds. One, <laughs> two, then three, four, five, six. We are going to have ourselves another Victoria Regina flush very, very soon, which is great because I like to see Victoria Regina bloom at the same time as my Unicum with nine buds. I know this was supposed to be blooms only, but I can't resist. 
I could do a separate video just with buds. Anyway, here we are. We're doing it now. Nine, as far as I can see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, nine buds. And when the Victoria Regina with that gorgeous purple blooms at the same time as my beautiful Unicum, <laughs> the two colors, orange and purple, they work so, so well. Love, love, love what I'm going to see here from a single little cane. And she's already starting a new growth. Okay, moving elsewhere. Let me take you elsewhere. Let me make sure I don't lose track of where my blooms are. I know, right? What a problem to have. But I want to show you one bud that I'm really babying. I even moved the orchid away from the outer edge of the shelf. I think there it is. You can see that. That is my Rapiculus Lalium, Sincorana. This is the OG of them. Let me make sure that you can see it. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is the OG of my Sincoranas. I have three. This will be the first time I see a Sincorana bloom on the patio. And she's growing another new growth under that pseudobulb right there. Love this orchid. This bud is precious. <laughs> That's why she was actually right here. And I moved the pot back one because I like my Sincoranas to line up. But I thought, yeah, that's a bit risky. You never know what can happen. Drop something, pop the bud off. So she's been moved back a slot just for her own protection. <laughs> okay, we are going to go elsewhere because I have more blooms. Just one second. Oh, speaking of which, how can I forget my little baby keikis? Class of 2020. My dendrobium of phyllum here. Keiki blooms. Stick around to the end. Hint, hint. Nudge, nudge. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I can't leave the blooming alley just yet. Look, this is my little epidendrum I got from Into Orchids and ADD. Look at this, her first bloom. Check this out. Oh, she's the deepest of red. She's an upside down bloomer, but oh, what a pop of color. She's not that big of an orchid. I was so surprised. And she grew this spike throughout the winter. I can't believe it. Highlight orchid, warm to hot grower. Well, not exactly with the conditions she had with me. But here we are. This is going to be exciting because these bloom out really, really long as well. And I'm looking forward to that. Just had to show you success. <laughs> Mini Mark with a straggler bloom. I'm about to cut the spike off just to give her a rest, get her to grow to more strength. Oh, that's so, so charming. I've got a new spike here on the other side. The buds had blasted on this spike. I think I'm just going to cut that spike off. Not let her exude this energy. Let her grow to strength. But isn't this just cheerful, cute and beautiful? So I've got my complex hybrid fowls still in bloom. I am so, so tempted to cut all the spikes off. They are beautiful, love the blooms, I've enjoyed them. Not that I'm getting bored about them, but you know, I have a very short window of opportunity of growth and I would like to take advantage of that and just give them their time to shine for a few days more. But I think these spikes are coming off, let them grow even stronger. Look at this, look at this. Oh, wow. Just wow. Anyway, Pièce de Résistance, Anonymous, if you're watching, I was going to wait for the big spike show here of a little Tolumnia spots or spotty. There she is. Her first bloom. It's been open for ages. I've kept this a little bit of a secret because I wanted the whole spike to open because look at all these buds. But it is so cute. I love this bloom. So anonymous. Here we go. I got that little Tolumnia that you sent me to bloom. Here's the plant. And then look at the neighbor. Anonymous, check her out. Here is the orange spread. Also blooming. Oh. <laughs> I am so happy. Considering the struggles I have with my Tolumnias through the winter, it is so nice to see how these have come through. 
They are not strong plants by any stretch of the imagination. But, oh, we're getting there. We are getting there. This fan grew a little bit wonky, but I left it and I'm hoping that eventually it'll correct itself. But yeah, ta-da! Orange spread. And let me confirm this. Spotty. Isn't this adorable? Mm. Anyway, <laughs> let me find another set of blooms for you. Look at this. Here's my Vanda Glossom, Alexandra. All her buds have opened. And yes, she's still inside because she's right here when I walk past to go outside and I can enjoy her blooms every time I walk by, stick my nose in there and get that beautiful candy kind of fragrance. It reminds me of blueberry sugar. This is my 2.0. I lost my original one to <laughs> stem rot because Dum Dum here was not careful. Even during the height of summer, I thought everything's gonna be okay, but aren't these darling? They last an age as well. This has been open at least six weeks now. Well, bloom after bloom, I've already lost some blooms, but the show has been going six weeks. And <laughs> half your peddler Miona, hello. You're about to go, I have a feeling, but look at them, they're still here, looking lovely, jubbly, fresh as ever. This has easily been also two months, two and a half months of these blooms being around. So she's inside. I'd like to get my paths outside this year. i to figure that out. Look at this. It's a light casty, no ID. There's a story behind this orchid, but look at this. It's the first time that I have two blooms on this orchid. She skipped last year, but there is a new growth already starting in the back on that bulb at the back. There's a repot we're gonna have to do on our Lycasti. Okay, now I'm going to turn around slowly. Don't wanna make anybody dizzy. Here is my Pinkton Bronze Age, little Phalaenopsis. Not a great blooming, not surprised though. She smells gorgeous. So I have her down here because I can smell her down here if I put her up next to my Aurora 3.0. I stand no chance appreciating that fragrance. Now the fragrances are pretty similar but this one is so intense. It's got a perfume that is hard to describe. There's a mixture of candy, a mixture of powder sugar and then there's a hint of, I don't know, gardenia? Something, something exceptionally exotic and delicious. So she is very intense with her two spikes. And these blooms are probably about to go over. I really should cut them off like I'm doing with my other Phalaenopsis because she should also get the opportunity to grow to potential. But oh my goodness, you guys, the fragrance. Oh, it's hard to resist. <laughs> But anyway, maybe I'll cut them off and let my Pink Tone Bronze Age take over because the fragrances are pretty, pretty similar. A bit of Skittles in there, all that fun stuff. My sweet memory is really coming well. She's struggling. Look at the leaves. I don't know how long my sweet memory is going to be with us because the cold in the grow space, no. She did not like it one bit. This happened the last time we filmed her and then we got six weeks of consistent cold, like really cold, and that's the damage from that. So, but you know, two buds. I will enjoy the blooms and then we'll see if there's any way I can recover this orchid or if she's history. And then of course I've got Walter in the back. I'm doing perfectly well. Walter is just such a reliable bloomer. And all the other ones? We cut them off in a video. So these are going to just start their vegetative growth. Ninja yellow, no blooms. Buds blasted, spike is being absorbed. She really misses her mama. But, ta-da! Lindy Kupovitz. Here we have a bud. So I'm hoping this is gonna be a nice blooming and that she won't frazzle and collapse on me as quickly as she did last year because she has had a repot since.
we're back outside because look who's in bloom oh, my red devil Salumnia red devil in bloom yay beautiful little spike that grew throughout the winter I let her bloom because she's got lots and lots of roots in the pot even though she's totally stressed out with anthocyanin but because of all her fantastic active roots in there she was okay to bloom she doesn't look the part but now she has amplified herself with some cute little blooms and then there's just one little thing I wanted to show you before I wrap this video up and thank you for joining me this started this morning that is my future curtain my future of film curtain the buds have not opened yet fully but we have been waiting three months for this Ta -da! oh <laughs> I have released some of the canes from the fishing line so I just want to see the shape of the orchid this gives me an idea of how she's growing where her major light influence is look at all this concentration of a film blooms right here one two three four five canes are overlapping There's nothing I can do about it it's just the way that she's growing these buds were like the ones on the curtain. They were like that yesterday. And then I stepped out this morning and I just said, hello, beautiful. Look at this. This is my longest cane right here. This is the one that I counted 51 blooms on. So give and take, I would say about 400, 400 blooms on this show. <laughs> Easily. Oh my goodness. Oh, you guys, so happy. I'm going to do a live stream. We're just going to hang out underneath our beautiful Aphilum blooms. If you care to join me for that, watch out for that notification because that is what I do. I sit on the floor underneath and I look up, lean back against the wall, look up. Because that is the best way to appreciate the blooms, to see them from underneath gorgeous anyway i hope that you enjoyed this little tour i loved showing you around especially as many many of the blooms here are now short-lived i haven't had the opportunity to just walk around with you nonchalantly show you around so i hope that you enjoyed being here with me i loved having you thank you so so much for watching and i wish you a continued beautiful day and i hope that this has added to that as well but on that one condition though, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.